Welcome back, everyone. Do you have your pumpkin spice latte? We talked about that last week, and it is resonating with the crowd. Uh, so today, your challenge will be, let's see if you can keep up with the podcast. Welcome to Kingdom Speak with Pastor Daniel McKillop. So Pastor Wade Townley and all of his fans have been sending us all things pumpkin spice all week. Pumpkin <laughs> bombing us. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I actually drank a pumpkin spice latte this morning. Did you? Uh huh. I didn't Nick drink the latte. Cafe. I got my pumpkin this episode spice. Is sponsored by pumpkin spice cup. I guess. That's, yeah. It's the new color. That, uh, that I think is that <laughs> the only way you could make a pumpkin spice latte worse yeah is buying it from mcdonald's <laughs> really oh come on really there's got to be at least one other probably another canadian in the crowd who lis- who listens to us that drinks mccafe oh for sure yeah. I mean, it's not all about tim hortons anymore up here in the north hate sure. to break it to you but my uh daily dose could easily big mcdonald's over tim hortons but anyways let's uh you know, we never have done an episode on coffee, and we said we were going to a yeah. long time ago. We did. We did. Broken promises on podcasting here today. Well, according to this listener, they titled this review, The Best Podcast Ever. I like that. It's pretty good. Five stars on Apple Podcasts in the USA. It says this, all I can say is, wow, there is not a week that goes by that I can't wait to hear the next Kingdom Speak episode. Every topic, special guests, and hosts, not only anointed, but also practical. This is my top recommended podcast that I send everyone to. Keep up the awesome work. Don't change anything. And that is from Reverend Matt Powwow on Apple Podcasts. There we go. I like, we will say amen to Reverend Powwow. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So how you guys doing? How are you guys doing? Man, I just walked in and you guys were at the table. I was like, hey, we should podcast today. Why don't we? Let's try a new thing. Yeah. It's Friday. Yeah. That's what we do on Fridays. It's a good Friday. Ooh. How many Fridays left in the year? Not that many. Right? Only a couple till snow. Ugh. 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 Yeah. It's time. It's time. Guess what? What uh, producer Randy's doing next week. That's right. Starting Monday. <laughs> oh, boys and girls. We will have some footage to share. Yeah. With the podcast crew. Yeah. I wonder if we'll need to give socks away next week. You're going to have to keep those ratings up. Gone hunting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> gone hunting will, will make gone fishing pale um, in why, comparison. Why don't you practice your moose call for the podcast audience right now? Uh, no, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> Chicken. <laughs> you need one of those. What do you do? Like a birch bark tuba? Like a Basically, big, yeah. 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 You got to talk. Come on, do it. You got to talk moose. Oh, I think I actually dude. have footage of him oh, doing I that. I think you probably it last year. I do. Last year, the host of this show uh-huh. was gone moose hunting. Uh huh. Yeah. And and he loved yeah. it so much. He hunted the entire week. Yes, he did. He hunted Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, yeah, Friday, yeah, and, and scored Saturday. on Saturday. Saturday. He waited till the last day. Uh, so, but since then. There was an episode about gone fishing, and I'm pretty sure I have footage that I may be able to share oh. with our social media audience. Oh, of what? Talk to me. Of what? Talk to me, people. If you want to see some footage of producer Randy. You're like, what is he doing? Moose calling. <laughs> I, I, think, I think I could help. They need to that. see it. But, but, but we need to hear from They you. need to see it. Yeah. And, uh, and you don't yeah. need to show the results of our trips last year either because I think it was basically crow. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so it wasn't working. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Canadian moose hunting. It's hardly anything better than that. Boy, I look forward to that every year. <laughs> Pastor McKillop is just excited. 
<clears throat> Boy, are we excited today for moose hunting. Yeah. We are yeah. looking forward to this episode. Let's talk about something else that is um, mm-hmm. pretty Canadian. Mm-hmm. The Queen. Ooh. Yeah. The Queen died. Yeah. God rest her soul. Long live the king. We've, we've had to rewrite yep. the song. It's no longer God save the queen. And we even have a new national anthem. We have a new God save the king now. Renaming the courts. Wow. Money stamps. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder what our currency is going to look like with Charles's face on it. <laughs> yeah. It's like, give me, give me uh, 10 chuck bills. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. It's gonna be it's gonna be different. Think of all the courts in the land there, the Queen's bench, all that kind of stuff. Etched in stone. They gotta go rename all these. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Like I seen a picture of the throne and it still has the E R or whatever her oh, yeah. uh, monogram, yeah. I guess, would be embroidered in the back. Like gonna what, have to change that. What 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 happens with that stuff? <laughs> Sell it on eBay. He apparently is keeping the same crown, though. Oh, you know really? They get to pick, right? Yeah. I mean, I've just been listening to a couple different podcasts and random stuff you Interesting. consume, and you get to pick the shape of the crown you want. So that crown that we've seen our entire lives is that rounded. Yes. That's what she picked. That's the shape. And he has elected to keep the same one. Really? Yep. I wonder... Like how do they how do they tweak that? Do you <laughs> go like to do you go to do you go to lids and get them to <laughs> I think adjust it's, it? No, it's a snapback. Just, oh, it's a snapback. Yeah, he's okay. going to be like, no, go two more it's buttons kind of, in. Is it kind of like the, the Burger King crowns where yeah. they yes. where they, yeah, yeah. they lock in? You got four little slits. Yeah, yes. If you're a big headed king, yeah. you move out to the. It's like oh, a little more, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too much. You're cutting off the oxygen. <laughs> Yeah. So I I uh, this this kind of sets up what we're going to talk about today. Mm-hmm. It's not been that far back that the Queen's husband passed, twenty twenty one, and one of the statements that they made about him was that when he married her, he knew that she was mm-hmm. was the Queen. Yep, or or, was, or was going to be in line yep. for the for the throne. Which meant that he would be second to her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for the rest of his life. You know when you sign up, right? the focus is this on her. Is, yeah. yeah. And so they made a statement mm-hmm. that he was the man that had to be content to live in the shadow of the queen or always walk two steps behind. Wow. Hmm. So whenever you've seen them entering the room, you notice that. She's it was always... A, yeah, it was a s- strategically choreographed entrance where hmm. Prince Philip wasn't that it? Was that him? Uh, I, I, I guess. Where's your cricket noises? Yeah, <laughs> I think we it was need, him. We need a producer on Google. I'm pretty sure it was him. Yeah, that always. Yeah, entered the room just slightly behind. Yeah, the Queen. And so you you see that happening now with Prince Philip. With, uh, was it Prince Philip? Okay. Yeah. You see that happening now with, uh, what do they call Camilla? Uh, Queen uh, consort, I think is what they okay. call her. Okay. So now they're not walking. Side by side. Side by side Interesting. Anymore. So he has like a preeminence. Yep. No matter where he goes. Yep. Wow. So that, that's an interesting, uh, hmm. interesting but that would be kind of weird, wouldn't it? Like you'd have to be very intentional about everywhere you go. It's like, it's yeah, it's always out there. Yeah, always. So we want to. I want to. I want to actually use that as a mm-hmm. platform a bit to introduce what we're going to talk about, and that is the different paces um, of the anointing. Hmm. Uh, I'll be the first to admit. I'm. I'm I'm kind of talking prematurely about mm-hmm. this. I don't have the full scope of this, mm-hmm. but it's been something that I have been um, 
mulling over a bit and wanted to share it with with our audience. All right. Um, you guys know I, I I love rehearsals. You know that. Mm-hmm. I absolutely <laughs> love rehearsals. It's right after move something. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 About the same. Yeah. yeah. Right. So um, one of the one of the aspects of wedding rehearsals, mm-hmm. okay, or it can be kindergarten graduation rehearsals, mm-hmm. is getting getting the pace right as you approach. Uh, the center aisle, walking down to the mm-hmm. to the platform for the ceremony. Yep. And there is always that um, expectation that when the miniature bride and groom enter, it's it's a pot shoot mm-hmm. as to whether or not number one they both will make it the whole way down the aisle. Yeah. If they will make it in step with each other, mm-hmm. and how often have we seen this where, where either one or the other is dominant, yeah, and drag. dragging, dragging the other, or holding them back, yeah, <laughs> and it's the perfect icebreaker for the moment, and everybody, yeah, everybody laughs, but they don't have the maturity, yeah, to stay in step, right, yeah, right, right. Now, it wouldn't be funny. If the bride walked in mm-hmm. and her father and her couldn't stay in step, mm-hmm. we would take that as a sign, right? right? Yes. Either <laughs> either the father is dragging her down the aisle she don't saying, go. I will yes. give you away, <laughs> right? <laughs> Get <Yeah>. up here. <laughs> yeah. uh. Or it's the bride yeah. dragging the dad down the aisle saying, yeah. you will give me away. Right? That's how we would interpret. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I see where you're going with this. The man. fact mm-hmm. that they are out of step with each other. Boy, that's, uh, you know, walking in step with your wife can be a challenge. Yeah. 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 When your legs are yes. 14 feet longer. Yeah, we, yes. we've, heard, we've heard the rants, haven't we, Randy? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it can, the, be, it can be very interesting, can it? Can be very interesting. So you're saying we do this spiritually. So when it comes to God, mm-hmm. and uh, we may we may break it down even a bit more than that, mm-hmm. the anointing. Mm-hmm. There is there is more to the anointing than just a feeling. There's more to the anointing than just a sensation. There is a rhythm to the anointing. There is a a pace. Mm-hmm. There's a gate to the spirit and without understanding this you know there's there's pitfalls on either side of this discussion and this is this is established pretty quickly in scripture Uh, you begin reading the first chapter of genesis and you read that the spirit moved Mm -hmm. and the word yeah proclaimed okay and it is this choreography of the supernatural Mm -hmm. the spirit and the word in tandem, Mm -hmm. all right? To overemphasize the spirit is to fall into the ditch on one side Mm -hmm. of charismaticism Mm -hmm. where anything goes and there's no boundaries or limitations, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's right. To give too much supremacy and emphasis to the word while fully understanding that the word is eternal and is forever settled and and, and okay, understanding all of that, it takes the spirit to keep the word from being a lethal agent that kills for the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. Mm-hmm. So the ditch on the other side of the road is legalism and uh, starchy mm-hmm. high water marks mm-hmm. that are impossible to attain. Mm-hmm. But the beauty of the harmony of the spirit and the word working in tandem with each other. It ushers in a creative force Mm -hmm. that literally reverses chaos and establishes order. Okay? Yeah. So if there's anything that can really define Genesis 1, it's a rhythm. It's almost poetic. The recording of it is almost poetic. Right? Yeah, that's true. The spirit moved. 
the word spoke, and it was so. Mm -hmm. Spirit moved, the word spoke, mm -hmm. and it was so. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there's this beautiful, uh, symmetrical, mm -hmm. again, I know we're using the word choreographed movement that emerging from that comes light separate from darkness, dry mm -hmm. land appears in the midst of the water, mm -hmm. fowls, fish, ultimately man. And the totality of creation emerges from that. Mm -hmm. Okay? So when you're talking about the anointing, to, to begin talking about the fact that the anointing has a pace to it mm -hmm. um, and, and a pace that varies, as we will soon find out, mm -hmm. can almost be a bit, oh, that's kind of wonky. Like, what, what, are you, what are you talking about right. with this 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 gate of the anointing all right mm -hmm. so i want us to look at um a passage of scripture that the psalmist records in psalms 133 and listen don't don't shut it off before you hear me out here because i know this is a known passage of scripture that we talk about the anointing all right mm -hmm. but go ahead and read down through this 133 verse 1 says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, <laughs> even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments. Are we really going to talk about that? As the dew of Hermon <laughs> and as the dew that Cut descended out. upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore even life forevermore mm -hmm. okay so don't just dismiss this i know that you know this passage and we yeah, have yeah, been unity yeah yeah mm -hmm. right yeah yeah and we've been very it successful is. at unpacking yeah. from this a mm -hmm. pattern that tells us unity amongst brethren is like the anointing mm -hmm. so we need to be united right yeah okay for sure and and that if you're anointed, you shouldn't be divisive, mm -hmm. and you shouldn't be a division causer. Mm -hmm. It should bring us together. All right? So we've, we've talked about that aspect, and, and I think we've been successful at it. And it's, it's important, and it is definitely applicable. But I think there's an additional application that we can take out of this, and that is the pace. Hmm. Of the anointing. Okay? He said, it is like the dew mm -hmm. atop Mount Hermon mm -hmm. that descends down the Mount of Zion. Mm -hmm. And so you understand when you look at this that what you see the anointing to be at the bottom of the amount of the mountain. Mm -hmm. is not what it appears to be at the top. Yeah, very interesting. So where you are on the elevation of the mount of anointing mm -hmm. determines the pace of anointing that you will experience. Hmm. This is key. If you find yourself at the top of the mountain, mm -hmm. the anointing is in droplet form. You have to sit down and watch with intensity to see the mobility of the anointing at the top of the mountain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. You have mm -hmm. to be patient mm -hmm. to pick up on the anointing. You can't be in a hurry at the top of the mountain to see the anointing. Mm -hmm. You have to be willing to tarry when you're at the top of the mountain to see the anointing. The farther down the, the mountain you get, the more easily recognizable the pace of the, of the anointing is. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. When you're at the bottom of the mountain, you can like cannonball dive into the anointing. Everybody sees it. They know where it's at. Right. Yeah. But if you don't understand that the anointing has varying manifestations. It's the same anointing in droplet form as it is in flow at the bottom. That's like the bishop preaching, the same thing in the loaf is in the crumb. 
Yeah. Right. Totally. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It is like now, so so there, there's times that when it when it settles on the top of that mountain, it's something that happens over a period of time. It's over the night, and it's in the early part of the morning. And it is a settling anointing. It's not it's not a rapid flow. It's, it's very gradual. It's, yeah. it's so gradual that you almost don't re- recognize it's there until it's like a blanket, and then it's, it's, it's there. And if you're in too big of a hurry, <laughs> can, you'll just say, nah, there ain't nothing in this. Let's move on. I don't see any rivers or ponds. Right. <laughs> There's no flow here. <laughs> yeah. Listen, Ooh. This, is so, this is so key. It has to settle before it flows. It has to settle before it flows. Yeah. And you have got to be able to manage the anointing in droplet form before you dive into it in flow. Mm -hmm. Selah. Well, we can just finish the podcast. (laughs) Yeah. It has a different pace. You miss out on divine encounters with God if the only pace that you can recognize the anointing on is a rapid, rushing, a cascading, flowing. Hmm. But you got to be able to pick it up when it just settles. There are times, listen, there are times as a man of God, as you study the anointed word of God, mm-hmm. and God has given you an anointing, That when he begins speaking to you, it's droplet form. It's here a little. It's there a little. Mm -hmm. It's piece by piece. You set down at your place of devotion. And you young preachers, listen to me. You sit down and you, you, you take droplet by droplet and you go, oh. And it settles on you because there's something here. And you may have to analyze it and you may have to scrutinize. And you may have to, with careful attention to detail, go, wow, let me scoop that over with this and let me take a bit of this Mm -hmm. and let's shove this together. And all of a sudden, a trickle begins to form. Mm -hmm. And it's often in the darkest parts of the night when nobody else is there. By the time I get to a Sunday morning service to preach it on the platform, it's a flow. And everybody's beating the the edge of the stage, screaming, preach, preacher. But it didn't start with a flow. It started with recognizing it in droplet form. And too many young men and, and, and old men, we can get intoxicated with the feverish pace of the anointing at the bottom of the mountain. And we don't put in the necessary time to scrutinize and set and wait and tarry until the droplets that have settled on the top of the mountain begin to form a flow that is enjoyed at the bottom. And it's the same. It's the same stuff. It's the same anointing. It's the same. Hmm. The reason we need to talk about this is the other example he gives is the flip. When the anointing was poured over Aaron's head. The flow was at the top. And by the time it got to the bottom, small, it was slowed down and it was droplets. Mm -hmm. Do you see how we, we are getting from the psalmist perspective? You need to know how to interact with the anointing at whatever pace it's moving. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. And so not only does the young preacher or the man of God, and it's not just young preachers, not only does the man of God need to know how through the to labor through the darkest parts of the night and pull droplet together with droplet, the congregation needs to know how to be able to do the same thing at the bottom. Mm-hmm. And again, this is not a superiority thing. This is simply when it, by the time the anointing gets to the base, it's settling again. So it's the complete adverse mm-hmm. to 
the dew falling and the mountain at the, on the top of the mountain and flowing at the bottom. To be addicted to the flow but detest the droplet is to be ambitious. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm afraid. And, and again, we're, we're stepping out here where angels fear to tread. <laughs> but I'm afraid in the movement, we've, we've become way more addicted to the flow hmm. than we have the droplet. And we all love the Friday night feverish pitch of a meeting mm -hmm. where your favorite preacher is, I mean, he is throwing it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, feels good. Okay? But yeah. if you can't handle the droplets of a, of a, of a Wednesday afternoon Bible study mm -hmm. where you are riveted to the Word of God as it settles on you, then the only thing that the only thing that keeps the Friday night feverish pitch on track is the settling of a Bible teacher, mm -hmm. or else you get in one of those ditches again, right? Either side of this road is a ditch that is catastrophic. Yeah, and we have got to have the Word and the Spirit working together in tandem. Wow. I was going to say, if you've ever driven by a large agriculture development and they have these irrigation setups, when you watch how they encourage growth, they, they use a fine mist. Yes. Right? It provides just that canopy. If you, if you try well to water a garden with a fire hose, yeah, you're just going to wreck it. Exactly right. <laughs> But when you're cleaning your yard, you want the fire you need hose. It. Absolutely right. Yeah. Right? You don't you don't want the mist. Yep. So the anointing is is everything that we need. Mm. And the times that we need the, the gully washers, it's that. Mm -hmm. But the times that we need the settling, mm. it's that. Okay. Uh this happened in the life of Philip. Mm -hmm. If we begin talking about Philip. And the Ethiopian eunuch. Mm -hmm. We automatically, if we have any Bible knowledge at all, <laughs> yeah. run to the translation. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's the oh, epic yeah. that everybody wants oh. in their ministerial mm -hmm. resume. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if a little history for our new Kingdom Speak listeners, because you are out there, just go back and listen to our old episode, right. probably in our first year, in our first season. Yeah, I'm sorry, that Be like Philip. Be like Philip. Be like Philip. Yeah. Yeah, we pounced on that for quite a while. Okay? Yeah. So let's tag that real quickly again because it fits here. Mm -hmm. It didn't start with translation. Yeah. It started with Philip hearing from the angel of the Lord yep. and saying, Arise and go. Mm -hmm. It started with walking. Mm -hmm. It started with obedience. Yeah. It started with the droplets of obedience and submission to what God is telling you to do. Yes, sir. That's where it commenced. He arose and he went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of Ethiopians. Mm -hmm. Okay. He had come to Jerusalem to worship. Continue on in verse 28. Was returning and sitting in his chariot, reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. So after he has walked, he is now there. Notice the timing of all of this mm -hmm. and how you got to pick up the pace of what God is doing. Yep. Right? Right. He walked with the right pace to be at the right spot oh, at the right moment. Yeah. Yep. And here comes the chariot. And boom, the prodding of the Spirit says, Now, go, now, go. Yeah, join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him. So now he's running. Yeah. Right? He walked mm -hmm. all the way to the south. And then when he got to that moment, he ran. Yes. To get to the chariot. All right? Go ahead. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou... 
what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Huh. So here's the setup. Everybody wants the flow. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants the, 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 this, this moment of spiritual euphoria. But it starts by walking when you're supposed to walk. Mm-hmm. Running when you're supposed to run. Sitting when you're supposed to sit. Right? Mm-hmm. That's the different varying paces of the anointing. How many listeners? This I just crossed my mind. And we're not going to derail the episode, but have you ever been in a church service where somebody's running when it's just not time to run? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. we've all been there, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, God bless Brother Randy. Yes. Look at him go. <laughs> well, yes. I was listening to a live stream. Oh, baby, look at him run. I was listening to a live stream of a noted mm-hmm. Pentecostal church in the movement. Mm-hmm. And uh, the preacher was was winding up, and he, he, he said, uh, everybody stand. Mm-hmm. And when he did, again, I'm I'm not anti <laughs> gifts of the spirit in operation. All right, but we're talking pace now. Yep. And he just it just erupted out of somebody mm-hmm. in the audience and they began to give tongues. And it it, it only got about six seconds out. And mm-hmm. the pastor said, Whoa, 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 wait a minute, brother, I still have the anointing. <laughs> Oh. Uh, <laughs> and I and and do you know what he did? He brought order back to it. Mm. Yeah, it's out of pace. God's not competing with himself. God's man is speaking, <laughs> and God's man evidently was still anointed, and the gifts and callings of God. And so, so pace, pace, pace. Yourself. Don't be out of step. Yeah, uh, yeah. Mm. Don't be out of step with what the anointing is doing. Okay. It is, it is after Philip walked when he was supposed to walk, ran when he was supposed to run, sat in the chariot when he was supposed to sit, mm-hmm. teach when he was supposed to teach, baptize, notice all of this is happening, and boom, when he gets done teaching, whap, there they are in a desert and they find water. The timing of God. And they go down into the water, Philip baptizes him, and when they come out of the water, it's the Friday night flow. It's the the, the pace of everything changed. The yeah. moment we all go back. This to, is right, right, right. Yeah, we talk about right. This is yeah. the this is the part of the story that we all talk about for sure. Yeah. This is the Instagram story. Yeah, yeah. this is the real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the highlight. This is it. Yeah. Yeah. Sixty second wonder. Yeah. Now I'm reading this this morning and in preparation for today. <laughs> I'm going, what for real? What did the Ethiopian eunuch think when he emerges out of the moment and he turns around to hug the man that just baptized him? <laughs> poof, and the guy's gone. Whoa. He had to wonder the rest of his life was this an angel? Mm-hmm. Who was it? We know, and Philip knew, mm-hmm. this is just a man that God is using that understands the varying paces of mm. the anointing. So when you walk when you're supposed to walk, run when you're supposed to run, sit when you're supposed to sit, teach when you're supposed to teach, kind of sounds like Psalms 1, you know? If you walk in the right places, talk in the right places, sit in the right places, yeah. stay away from the wrong places, be. you should be like a tree that's planted and whatever you do shall prosper. Yeah, you'll grow up. Mm-hmm. The pace. The pace. Hmm. Okay? Um, let's look at Joshua, the third chapter, because this, this is really where it all starts. Mm-hmm. Joshua has taken over from Moses, mm-hmm. and Moses is now deceased, and, and, and he's moving the people of God into the promised land. This is a brand new thing, okay? This is, we're entering, entering into a dimension of possessing the promise right. that we've not tapped into before, mm-hmm. okay? Go ahead. Joshua rose early in the morning, and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, 
and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host and they commanded the people saying, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it. Yet there shall be a space Mm -hmm. between you and the ark. Mm -hmm. All right. Our audience knows this, but the ark is that only visible manifestation of where God met with humanity in the Old Testament. It was the most valuable piece of furniture in all of, of, of the Israelites' possession. Mm-hmm. Okay? So they were trained whenever yeah. that thing moves. Yeah. You change what you're doing based on what it's doing. Mm-hmm. They've just come through the wilderness where they have been taught by Moses when the cloud moves, when the fire moves, we move. We look for divine indicators to set the pace for our actions. Yeah, right. Okay? Yeah. When the box moves, mm-hmm. hustle. Yep. Don't go any further. Right? Yeah. You adjust the pace of your actions off of the pace of the ark. Stay close enough. Now, he said... Keep a space between you. Mm-hmm. Why? Then he, he actually gave him a measurement. About 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near. Now that's an interesting metric. If you use the metric of measurement for 25 inches per cubit, it's almost a mile back from the arc. Hmm. You take the size of that arc, it's not very big. Well, but there's like- millions of people that have to see this thing. Mm-hmm. Okay? So, Continue. Come not near unto it that ye may know the way by which ye must go. For ye have not passed this way heretofore. Right. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Yes. And Joshua spake unto the priests, saying, so, Take up the ark. So here's, here's the takeaway. You have to be close enough to the ark to be able to see it and be led by it. Yep. But you need to be far enough back from it. Mm-hmm that you don't lose your reverence for it. So Mm -hmm. there are times throughout Scripture that we know the ark traveled miles in one day. So based on that, we know that it was at varying degrees of pace that it would move. And there's other times that it would just stay or they would move it just a short distance. Yeah. And that was what the indicator was to the people. Mm-hmm. You don't try to force the ark into your pace. Oh, man. You adjust your walk based on how fast the ark is moving or how slow the ark is moving or how about this, whether the ark is moving. Hey, pick it up up there, boys. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Getting a little antsy back here. Leave. <laughs> yeah. Random thoughts that come in your mind. Yeah. It's like in the in the prayer room when you're walking around. The, and oh, the, and man. The little, and the little kid steps to the outside aisle. Wee. <laughs> Passing lane. <laughs> Passing lane. <laughs> yes. Out of pace. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're in construction and traffic, <laughs> yeah. right? And you see that one dude that's just going to go do his own thing. He's like, man, just right. get in line with us, bro. Right. <laughs> exactly. Just get in line. Where I am leading you, Joshua is speaking on the behalf of God to the people. Where I'm leading you mm-hmm. is a new place. You don't know the turns. You don't know the pull-off lanes. Mm -hmm. Never been this way before. So you don't want to be so close to the ark that if it makes an abrupt Mm -hmm. left or right, you miss it. If it stops on a dime, you bump into it because this is not something that you just casually handle or interact with. There's a space that needs to be preserved around the anointing. Yeah. That you're far enough away that you don't breach the sanctity of this thing, mm-hmm. but you're close enough that you don't miss the cues of what you're supposed to follow. Hmm. Very good. Okay? Very practical. Yeah. Keep the space right. Keep the space right. 
And so the Bible says 2,000 cubits was the measurement mm -hmm. for that particular setting. But I want you to read verse 17. So they, they all go, yes, pastor, we get that. We got it. Um, so while this thing's moving, we need to keep a space between us. And then the priest grabbed the ark. And what do they do? The priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan. And all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. Think about this. Mm -hmm. They were just told, keep a space around the ark of 2,000 cubits. Mm -hmm. Then the priest steps into the water with the ark on their shoulders, and the entire nation passes right by them. Clearly within 2,000 cubits. Hmm. I believe there's something to learn from this. When the ark is moving, mm -hmm. you need the space. When it's stationary, you can get closer to it. You can draw nearer hmm. to it. There are things we're going to we're going to we're now we're going to go here. There are things we can learn from him when he settles. Yeah. I was going to ask you about Jesus, right? There were times when he would sit down, and it appears like absolutely those moments were you know, absolutely. people people grab stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, when he's passing through a village, you might grab a healing on the way by. Yeah. But he's not going to sit down and... That's not where the, he drops revelation. Yeah, the Beatitudes aren't going to happen in, on the side of the road. Right. Yeah. Right. Wow, what a concept. Hmm. So when it stopped, they were able to get closer to it, to walk through, to take advantage of what it was doing for them. The access mm -hmm. that it was giving them. Yep. Get this. While it was stationary, it was giving them access. Yeah, they're getting their promise. <laughs> Everything you get isn't, isn't it, it, you, you, don't, you don't always get it when you're cutting the rug. Sometimes you get access to stuff when it just settles down and it stops and you make adjustments mm -hmm. based on the pace of the anointing. When it's moving, a little more space. Mm. When it's stationary, you look for the, what are you opening up to me at this moment? Mm. This mm. is a special moment. Okay? This, this has application. This has application. Oh, my. In every area of our life. But for sure, it has application here. If you're going to be an anointed leader, easy now. <laughs> easy. I sense. I sense yeah. we if could get a bit of a dramatic a pause. tirade here. If I, take I a drink I, of I water, let me tell you about <laughs> KingdomSpeak.ca merch. So if you haven't heard, you just did a thing. Didn't you? <laughs> you just did a thing. No, I want you to load up. I'm not want trying to get you to cool down. Oh yeah. 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 If you haven't heard, Kingdom Speak merch is live, and uh, head over to KingdomSpeak.ca/slash/merch and get your pumpkin spice socks right now. <laughs> yes. yes, and your mug. <laughs> hey, That's don't it. we have backpacks? We have them. They're not quite ready yet, but yes, we have them. They have what do you mean they're not quite ready I've yet. seen a picture of one. I saw seen, a picture. I've seen one produced. Yes, they look pretty good. Ah. Yeah. yeah, they do exist, folks. They're out there somewhere. All right. So, yeah, thank you All for right. being a member of kingdomspeak.ca, and thank you for uh, subscribing. Yeah, thank you. In other words, if you haven't, <laughs> nudge, no, nudge. No, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> we take our thank you back. No bueno. <laughs> All right. Proverbs 18 and 16 says, a man's gift will make room for him. Space. Okay? Yeah. It, 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 it brings him before. before great men. Yeah. Okay? So the ark, 1 Samuel, the fourth chapter, tells about how they got into a battle with the Philistines. Yep. It's going very much 
against them. Mm -hmm. And so they get the idea, let's go get the ark and fetch it. Yes. Okay. Yes. We decide where it goes. Right. On our terms. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was stationary. Yeah. And they wanted to adjust the pace of it <laughs> to match the feverish battle that yeah. they were in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That didn't go so well. Negative. Mm -hmm. They lost it. A man's gift will make room for him and bring him. Mm -hmm. Bring him. There is nothing like a ministry mm -hmm. where the gift brings you into a relationship with the gifted. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. If you get in the room before your gift does, you have to sell yourself to the great men in that room. <laughs> oh, man. Think about that for a second. Don't get in there before your gift does. Don't get in there before <laughs> your gift does. Oh, yeah. If you follow your gift into the room, it's already sold you. Oh, yeah. It's made the introduction. Yeah. It's made the introduction. Yeah. Life is so much easier. Quit trying to outpace your gift. Quit trying to gain access to rooms that your gift hasn't unlocked that door yet. Ugh. If the cloud is not moving, if the fire is not moving, hunker down. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. If it's not flow, then obsess about the droplets. Yeah. Adjust you to that. Don't try to drag that into the pace of ministry that you are coveting at that moment. I just thought of this too. Like, so in the scriptures we read earlier when Joshua was giving them instruction, I mean, when they were marching and that was a mile out, the line was behind the ark, right? So you're proceeding. Yes. Well, when that hunkered down and they camped, what did they do? They all got around it. Yes, right? exactly. They so, if, it, so if you were at the back of the line, your position improved. Very good. Right. Very good. Very good. Yeah. It just kind of adds to the whole, when things aren't moving, that's your chance to maybe get a little closer. Yes. <laughs> yes. Don't say, Reposition Don't yourself. say, let's keep moving. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's talk about this aspect of it. And again, there, there are so many layers to this. Moses is called by God up the mountain. Mm -hmm. He steps into the glory of God. The cloud descends. If that's not anointing, it's thunder, it's lightning, it's the face of God. He's, he's, he spoke with him mm -hmm. as a friend speak face to face. The congregation is at the bottom of the mountain. Before Moses goes up, clearly we don't have we don't have recorded writ inspired writ of this, mm -hmm. but somewhere he set an expectation for how long he was going to be gone because they measured the fact that he did not return with the fact that he's been staying away too long, right? And so they say. Yeah, they had an idea of what his pace should be. Right. And the right. forecasted time of his arrival. <laughs> right. Whether Moses said, I'm going to be back in 24 hours. I yeah. mean, we know it was up yeah. to 40 days, I believe. But yeah. or whatever it was, when the pace adjusted, yeah. they refused to adjust. That's right. That's a seven-day journey, and it's day 80 should be here. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's right. Okay. At that moment, they look at Aaron, and they say, do something. all right, man, we've got to do something about this. Get itchy. Let's, let's keep this thing moving. And so they construct an idol at the base of the mountain, and they, because they refused to stay in pace with what the anointing was doing, mm -hmm. they said, no, we're just going to go ahead and worship anyway. Uh, actually, that's not a good idea. That's idolatrous. Mm -hmm. When you continue... Uh, this is this is this is big stuff because this affects how we have church. When you continue to worship, outpacing the anointing, 
That is idolatrous. Sila. Mm-hmm. Well, we practiced the song. Yeah. Well. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Right. This is what we do every Sunday night. Oh, we have to. Part of the program. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. what if what if the anointing is settling at the top of the mountain? Yeah. If we use the same analogy of Psalms one thirty three, what was happening at the bottom of the mountain should have been a cascading volume of what was going on at the top. Yeah. But because you have a man that understands a leader, an anointed leader that understands the role and the pace of the anointing, but a congregation at the bottom that doesn't, Mm -hmm. they're out of step with each other now. Yeah. Uh, Does this make, yeah, sorry, are you saying, so it was thunder and smashing at the top of the mountain, right? Yes. So maybe they were supposed to be getting the droplets. Yes. Right? Yes. And they wanted, well said. They wanted to party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Ugh. Well said. Right. And the inverse could also be true. Yes. At any given time. Yeah. So when you have um, when you have when you have this moment going on, Moses is at the top and Moses is getting the Ten Commandments. He's watching the finger of God. Right. It doesn't get any bigger. On tables of stone. It doesn't get any bigger. While the people at the bottom are using their fingers (laughs) to To build a cow. A cow. (laughs) Can we get any more opposite than that? Yeah. So when you have a man of God that understands the pace of the anointing, but a congregation that doesn't understand the pace of the anointing, there's no harmony, and there is a great risk of idolatry. Mm. And the pressure can be on a Moses to go, we, we got to shout, because that's what we do. Wow. And we have a group of people, and we have congregations, and, and this is, this is, this is uh, <clears throat> any congregation is susceptible to this. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm fearful that we've got a generation arising that has lost the ability to wait on God. Hmm. We know how to dance before the Lord. We know how to shout. But we don't know how to tarry. Hmm. We just don't know how when God says, I want to take a few extra moments right here. Yeah. To go. That's okay. I'm willing to do it. You know, I've heard I heard someone preach one time. I don't remember where this was. But the point of the message was if you knew what God was doing, you'd just wait. Right. Okay. Cuz they got restless. Yeah. And and they didn't. Yeah. Now they should have known what God was doing cuz they could have seen the lightning and heard the thunder. And, yep. But yep. You know, just wait. <laughs> so let, let me let me let me respond to that. The there's exceptions to everything. I don't have of course. I don't have course. time to qualify them yeah, all. Yeah, we're okay? just in this topic right now. But yeah, when you're at the base of the mountain and you're out of step with the pace of the anointing, yeah, all you can do is celebrate what has already happened. Ah, very good. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But when you are willing to stay in the flow, even when it extends beyond what you were expecting it to be, Mm. you're in the realm of the prophetic at that moment. And now God is speaking to you about tomorrow. Mm. And if worship and leadership Mm. never learns how to stay in step with the anointing, All we'll ever be able to do is celebrate the Red Sea that we've come through. And we will never be Mm -hmm. exposed, again, to what you just said. We never know what God's doing in those moments. Moses was getting a download of information that was forever going to alter the future of Israel. Mm -hmm. This is the tabernacle plan. Yep. I want you to build it this way. This is the dimensions. This oh, is man. the this is the thread count, the color choices, the instrumentation. He was getting it all. Mm-hmm. 
You don't think that was worth just a few more hours on the top of the mountain to get that download? Bro. But when you're at the bottom, all you can do is celebrate that you're not in Egypt anymore. Yeah, worship a cow. Which, ironically, is what you just came from. And claim that that's what brought you out. <laughs> <laughs> but you were just screaming for a deliverer. Right. You know? Yeah. Right. Oh, very good. Very good. <sighs> the There's a personal application to that, too, right? Yes, there is. And and let, let me let me just throw this in on the side. Mm-hmm. I think I think there's this aspect as well. And again, I, we don't have time to, to to really dive into this, but we're in bonus material now. We are when a man of God, an, an anointed man, mm-hmm. is pulled from among men for men. Mm-hmm. Your there needs to be a space around that man. That's not just Tom. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yep. Right? Yep. Hey, Fred. Set apart. No. Yep. That's your pastor. Yep. That man, you need to have a relationship with him. Mm-hmm. You do. But you cannot be so close to him that he can't lead you. Hmm. And if the relationship that you have with him has you being more of a friend Mm-hmm. than him being mm-hmm. your spiritual mentor and leader, then you need to pull back on the friendship side so that you don't run the risk of losing a leader. That's right. Right? Yes. Sir. So there's Very that good. entire Very dynamic good. of it. It's it's not it's not uh Joe. That is your fr- that's your pastor. Mm-hmm. And and you need to keep enough space around him that when he pulls a left, you know how to course correct. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And so Jesus goes to Calvary, and this is the setup for our final application here. Jesus goes to Calvary, Mm -hmm. dies, buried, resurrects. The disciples are reeling from this. They still don't know that he is resurrected. Mm -hmm. Okay? And we got a couple of these guys walking down the road to Mm -hmm. Emmaus. Yep. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. Mm-hmm. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Jesus himself drew near and went with them. This is what I want you to notice mm-hmm. in the context of what we have been talking about is that Jesus, the anointed one, made the first adjustment. Yep. Okay. Okay. Jesus. So you got guys walking at a certain pace. And he and came he alongside. Up. Yeah. Yeah. And then said, now I'm going to adjust so I don't outpace you. Yep. Really, and this this is where it could, ah, the incarnation is literally that. It is God <laughs> adjusting himself to the oh, pace of yeah. humanity. Oh, yes. He's coming down in a few yeah. notches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. It is the omnipotent God refusing to be everywhere at once mm-hmm. and walk with you. Yeah. You ain't going anywhere, but I'll come down. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. That is the incarnation. Jesus, the anointed, the anointing. Mm-hmm. makes the first adjustment. It finds where you are on the road of life and it comes alongside of you and it begins talking to you. Mm-hmm. It communes you with you on your emotional level. It communes with you on your mental capacity. It communes with you. Jesus had that innate ability to talk to a fisherman and turn around and talk to a politician and turn around and talk to a tax collector mm-hmm. and connect with every one of them. The anointing that he possessed Mm -hmm. allowed him to adjust the pace to humanity. There are times in a church service where often, and I would would say almost without exception, the anointing finds us first. Mm -hmm. It comes along us, and we were singing that song And it goes, I like that. And it walks with Mm -hmm. us. And we begin 
we began a journey and we're talking together and 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 we find out later something starts happening within us our heart begins burning and we say ooh there's something about this i should know a bit more about what's going on here than what i do i really love the pace that we're at right now okay mm-hmm. then and this this is this is all about weeping with those that weep and rejoicing with them that rejoice and finding the pace of the individual that God has called you to minister to. Mm-hmm. He, Jesus did that so well. He did it. Sit at the well and just... Yes, <laughs> yes. I'm willing yeah. to wait till you catch up. Yeah, you guys catching any fish out there? <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. But then it switches. Mm-hmm. As it always does. Yep. Uh, verse 28 says, And they drew nigh unto the village whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us. He goes, okay, now, if you're mm-hmm. if you're comfortable with just a heart-burning, heart-warming sensation, it's a Tuesday night Bible study, it's a Sunday morning, if you're okay with the fact that I matched your pace mm-hmm. long enough to give you a little time, and then you're just going to move on, or you're going to rather, maybe you should say it this way to stay in, in with, the, with the narrative here, you're, you're going to go to the next point and hang out, and I'm just going to move on. Mm-hmm. And we have church services mm-hmm. just like that, mm-hmm. where we can leave and say, we walked together for a while. Mm-hmm. But we got to our destination. And our destination is here. And so this is where we're going to stop. Then it becomes the responsibility of those who really want to know him Mm -hmm. to pick up on this moment. And he said, I'm going to go a little bit farther. But they constrained him. (sighs) Saying, abide with us for it is toward evening. The day is far spent. And he so. We want you to stay with us. So now it is the constraining of the anointed one to stay with us at this point. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then he says this. Notice what the next phrase is. And he went in to tarry with them. To what? To tarry with them. To tarry with them. (gasps) Hmm. They're not even walking now. They're sitting, they're tarrying, they're waiting. This is an aspect and an art that is lost in Pentecost. Hmm. Is we have become better at walking with him than tarrying with him. Oof. Wow. That is not to say that we don't walk with him. Well, no, you're going to have to walk. Yes. You've got to walk with him. Yeah, of course. But there are secrets that we learn about him when we tarry with him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And get this, he went in and tarried with them. So there's times when you're waiting, you need to know he's waiting. And he's okay. And it's in that moment that he'd done something that he could not do when he was walking with them. He sat down at the table. He took the bread. Mm -hmm. He blessed it. He broke it. And he gave it to them. And their eyes were opened. There we go. That's right. And they knew him. Mm -hmm. And then what? And he vanished. (laughs) (laughs) He pulled the Philip. (laughs) He sped up and left him. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Yeah. So the paces in this story are walking with them, tarrying, sitting, vanishing. Yep. We have four different paces of the anointing in this passage. And if they would have only walked with him mm-hmm. and would not have been willing to tarry with him, their eyes would never have been opened. There are certain aspects that we will never find out about Jesus by only walking with him. Some revelations you only get by tarrying. 
That is what a great portion of the people missed out on in the upper room. Exactly right. Same thing. Yeah. Everybody wants the day of Pentecost experience, but nobody wants to tarry. That's right. Man, that's Jesus in the garden. Yeah. Just right. one hour, boys. Right. One hour. I've got to say this disclaimer before it gets pointed out. I'm not saying that we have to tarry for the Holy Ghost now. As far as no. the initial infilling, the tarrying is done. This Holy Ghost is here. It is poured out. But there are dimensions mm -hmm. that we still need to wait on God. We still need to tarry. And those that are willing to stick around in an upper room and wait on God shall mount up with wings as eagles. Mm -hmm. They shall, if they're willing to wait, then they'll be able to match all the other paces. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Mm -hmm. But you got to be able to match every pace of the anointing. It is time for the Pentecostal movement to get back to making the necessary adjustments. If the anointing is flowing, flow. If it's droplet form, sit down and wait on it. Because we are, I'm afraid, if we don't master this, we're missing out on a lot of eye-opening revelations of who Jesus Christ really is.